Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the US, 10 a.m. in Australia or 1 a.m. in the UK. Remember though, if you miss the live streams, you can always catch up with the premiere event streams. They're on a Friday and Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time in the US, which is 7 a.m. in Australia or 10 p.m. in the UK. I hope all you guys and girls are well. Hope you all had a great weekend. Uh, we're going to continue working on our Art Deco building, our UE4 cinematic, let's call it that. Um, that we're creating in Unreal Engine 4.19.2. We're setting the cameras up for our cinematic. We're in the environment at the moment around the pond area. So we're going to continue setting up our cameras today. Remember, if you've got any questions or anything you're not sure about, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. If I can help, I'm happy to try. Uh, if you just want to pop in and say hello, that's always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, that's completely fine. Okay, so Mondays every week we start by reviewing last week's camera work. Uh, so I set the cameras up on Mondays and Tuesdays. And then between Tuesday and next Monday, I render out those camera shots and save them out to uh, an MP4 file. And we, we review them on Monday's stream. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. Just making sure my mic is unmuted because I have forgotten before. And my music is playing. It all looks good, so... I uh, just want to re remind you guys too that our subs to my channel that uh, sub pop-ups are now live. So sub badges are live and pop-ups are live. And what the pop-ups are are special commands you can enter in Twitch chat that will then trigger an on-screen animation uh, to play while the stream is live. So it, you can only use the pop-ups when the stream is live. But if you are a sub and you want to use them, just put exclamation pop-ups in Twitch chat and they will pop right up for you. So all the subs can now give their own, hand out their own fill slaps. I'll set one off just to show you what they are. So this is fill slap. So if you want to hand out your own fill slaps, you can enter that command. But if you want to know what all the commands are, there's about six of them so far. I will add to them gradually. Uh, just put exclamation pop-ups in Twitch chat and that will give you a link to uh, to a web page that will show you all of the commands. I'll pop it in so you guys can see what I mean. Uh, uh, doesn't look like um, Nightbot has set that up. What's a pop up? Let me see. There we go. <laughs> My mistake. So if you want to find out what the commands are, just put exclamation pop up. That will set, Nightbot will give you that link. If you go to that link, then that'll show you all the commands for all the different pop-ups. There's a smaller animation as well to show you what the command will do on screen. Okay, so let's review our cameras from last week. Uh, where do I put them? I put them on E Drive. Hey, Sniper Echo, good to see you, buddy. How are you? Did you have a good weekend, Sniper? I am, I'm good, yep. No, I'm well, Sniper Echo. Busy with work as usual. But aside from that, I'm good. <laughs> I hope you're well. Uh, yes, actually, I mean, I should have put a notification in the uh, mods channel on Discord for you mods as well, just to tell you about the pop-ups that are now live, in case you get any questions about those. But, um, yep. <laughs> pop-ups are now live and sub-badges are now live. You're a bit sick? Oh, that's no good to hear, Sniper Echo. Never nice when you're sick. I thought I was coming down with something uh, a week or two ago, but seems to have gone away. <laughs> you know how sometimes you can just feel not completely right? Like, yeah, you just it's hard to explain, but you just feel like something is all. That's how I felt a couple of weeks ago, and normally when I start feeling that way, it's like I'm coming down with a cold or the flu, but it went away, thankfully, so... <laughs> but I'm... Sorry to hear you're not well, Sniper Echo. Get better soon, buddy. Uh, and if, if you're not up to um, hanging out in chat, then that's cool. Don't ever worry about that sort of thing. I know you're busy, and if you're not well, <laughs> don't ever feel like you've got to be in chat because you're a mod, okay? And I want to make that clear to all, all you guys that um, 
I know you have lives. I know if you can't watch me, you can't watch me. And I know if you can't be in the chat, you can't be in the chat. That's completely fine. Yeah, I hate that feeling too. I know what you mean. I'm just going to grab a quick drink. I forgot to mute my mic, so you're all probably hearing me drinking. Um, yeah, so again, Sniper, I hope you feel better soon, buddy. Make sure you, um, I don't know if you're coming down with a cold or what it is, but stay warm, stay well. Happy and healthy, that's what we want to be, happy and healthy. You're here because you enjoy it? Well, good to see no, no other reason. Well, that's what I like to hear, Sniper Echo. I'm glad you're here because you enjoy it. That's the whole point of the stream. I want you guys to uh, to enjoy the stream. You wouldn't watch, hopefully, but if you didn't. Um, yeah, so good you're here. But I do hope you feel better seeing Sniper Echo. Um, cameras from last week, yes. Now, what, one thing I did notice last week when I did a review of the cameras, when I reviewed my stream after the fact, because I don't watch it while I stream, um, I noticed my, my screen had been zoomed in and, and when I played back the videos there were like these jumps of it zooming in and zooming out and you guys were probably watching and thinking what the hell's Phil doing with his cameras? That was a problem with the capture card. Nothing to do with the video. The videos don't zoom in and zoom out. just wanted to point that out. Uh, I'm looking at the capture here though and it's, it's capturing correctly so. Where did we get up to last week? Uh, I think we got up to shot... I think it was shot 24 was the last shot. Let me just play shot 24 more. Check. Yeah, I think this this was not last week's camera work. It's after this one. Oliski, hey Oliski, good to see you, buddy. Um, yeah, I, I, I did see a message um, in Discord. We'll, we'll talk about that in two seconds. I'll just go through the cameras first, Oliski, and then we can uh, talk about the problem you're having in UE4. So yes, this was the last camera we worked on prior to last week. So we'll move on now to the new camera shots, which are the ones we worked on last week. Uh, so the shot 25 is one of the new ones. And this is the one where we go over the pond. Now again, I render out these camera shots so that we can take them all into Adobe Premiere Pro once we've finished setting up all our cameras and we can put our cinematic together in Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, I do want you guys to remember though, you don't need to use an external program if you want to do this sort of cinematic work. You can do it all inside of UE4 using Sequencer. Uh, you can even save it out to a movie file, but you can't save out any audio in Sequencer. So because we want a music track and we want some sound effects, we're doing it in Premiere Pro. Okay, so that's a shot that just travels over the pond and ends in the grass at the very end. Just there. Let's move on to the next camera. Shot 26. Okay, this is a slow pan that we do across the terrace. Again, these sort of shots are just um, to give the viewer context as to where they are within the environment. Because we have a lot of shots where we've got close-ups of stuff or we're moving down the path. This just helps the viewer to, as as they watch the cinematic, to understand where they are inside of the world that they're watching. And this is just a slow pan across the terrace just to give that context for the viewer. We've got a couple of shots, context shots. Uh, let's move on to a new one. Okay, now this is the shot where we put the camera high above and we're zooming down on the terrace. I don't know if we'll actually end up using this shot. I may not use it. We'll see how we go. Or if we do use it, I might cut it here and just have it play from this sort of position on. It's a little bit dizzying to watch as a viewer because the camera is spinning. Um, I just thought it might have been a good shot for an overview again of the terrace. Yeah, it's dizzy, I know. I thought that too. As soon as I started playing it, maybe slower would work. That's true, um, uh, Oliski. I th but I thought the same thing. As soon as I watched it, I thought, well, that's, that's really disorientating, having it spinning around like that. Uh, so we might not use it. If we do use it, I might cut it from maybe here onward sort of thing and maybe slow it down. Because, of course, uh, we render out at 60 frames a second, so <laughs> I will stop it. There you go. I don't make yours. I don't want to make Sniper Echo sicker than he already is. <laughs> okay, this is shot 28. This is um, another overview of the terrace. 
uh, what I was saying though, because we're rendering out at 60 frames a second, that allows us to do slow motion. What do you mean, what is this player, by the way, Oliski? Oh, this is VLC, if you mean, mean the video player. It's VLC. It's a free video player you can download. It's incredibly good. It's, I've used it for years and years and years. I don't, over any other media player, this one I find is the best. Your VLC doesn't look like that. Well, you can, um, oh, I skin it. You can add a, you know, you can add skins on VLC. And I added a skin, which is called eDark, I think. You can download it from uh, VLC's website on their skins, under their skins page. Uh, yeah, that, and I like it because it's a dark skin. I like I like things to be nice and dark. Yep, it's called, I'm pretty sure it's called E-Dark. Uh, so yeah, again, this is just an overview for the viewer to see the terrace. Now this one is the normal speed. I did also save one out, which is slow motion, which is this last shot here. So this is the same shot, but we're slowing it right down. And we can slow it right down because we rendered them out at 60 frames a second. So inside Adobe Premiere, you can um, interpolate the footage to get it to play at 30 frames a second, which in effect slows it down. So it's slow motion. And we may use a combination of the slow version and the fast version sort of cut together. When we get into Premiere, we'll tackle all of that sort of stuff. So again, just a general overview of the terrace. Okay, so now we can move on to the new camera work. But before I do that, I just want to talk about the problem that you're having, Oliski. Um, thank you. I'm glad you like it. Uh, so you're having that problem with, and I see in Discord here you posted those pictures. So you said you fixed the problem with the UV when you build your light with the skylight. Uh, actually, you said you should, uh, the skylight you think is causing the problem with your scenes. You don't have any problem if you use a simple directional light without any indirect lighting. Okay. Now, uh, that sort of problem, I, I, I have not, my level I'm not running into this problem. And I use a, a, a direct skylight, which is movable, and a, 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 a direct light, let's not call it a skylight, a direct light which is movable and a skylight which is static. If I sort of zoom around here in my viewport, we can probably find them. There they are. So just here, you see I have my direct light, that's movable, and my skylight, which is uh, static, and I haven't run into that issue. The only time I've seen issues like that sometimes is um, when the normals on the mesh, aren't, when you don't have en enough normals on your mesh. So uh, to try and explain that, if I just open up Max, it's mostly a wall problem, yeah, okay. I get that. I can see in your, your ceiling looks fine. I don't see any problems really with the lighting there. Um, now there are a couple of couple of settings you can change inside your skylight to make sure that, to up the number of bounces. Maybe the bounces are too low. It will slow the render time down a little bit, but it might fix the problem that way. Um, so that's one option. The other option uh, is to make sure you are using an importance volume, aren't you? So inside your Unreal level, you've got an importance volume set up, yep, which is a, a box that you put around all the parts of your level that contain something. So the first thing I want to ask is, do you have an importance volume? So you, you tell me in chat, uh, Oliski, if you make sure, you, do you have an importance volume in your level? Um, again, I'm just going to, just got to wait for Max here to organize itself. If I jump into Unreal, let's full screen the perspective here. And if I look up, where are we? Here we go. I've got an importance volume and I've also got a post-process volume. So the first thing I want to ask you is, do you have an importance volume? And you see it just, it runs around the level, just all the parts of the level that have stuff in it. If it's outside, there's no stuff, so it doesn't go past the stuff I have. But you must make sure you have an importance volume. So I'm waiting for you to tell me, Oliski, do you, <laughs> you build lighting? What do you mean? What do you mean, Oliski, you build lighting? I don't understand. Uh, my lighting has been rebuilt. 
Crosswind, good to see you, Crosswind. How are you? Uh, I, I have built my lighting, Oliski. Yes, I've done a production quality lighting build. That's why we're doing our camera saves out, uh, saving out our camera work now because my lighting has been built to production quality. It's good to see you, Crosswind. Did you have a good weekend, buddy? You're doing good. Good to hear. Poor Sniper Echo is a bit sick, so let's all send our love to Sniper's waiter so he gets better sooner. On that screenshot, there was no importance volume. Okay. Have you put an importance volume in your level at any stage? Have you, have you tried it with an importance volume? Because you, you really, really, really need to have an importance volume. Number one, if you don't, you're going to reduce the quality of your lighting because Unreal is shooting rays into the entire level. It does, and having an importance volume tells Unreal, just concentrate on this part of my level. Let's just shoot the rays within this box. It's been hectic, Crosswind says. Uh, got all my stuff moved to a new house. Oh, cool. Maybe now I can get back to 3D. Well, good to hear. Everybody should be doing 3D. You guys know I feel that way. Uh, it's, moving is such a pain, Crosswind. I really feel for you. But now that you've got it all settled, that's great. I know what it's like when you have to move, though. It's major, major pain. Major pain. The packing, the unpacking, uh, the setting up of furniture. and uh, I feel I feel where you're coming from. It is a pain. A major, major pain. But it's good to hear. Maybe you can get back to 3D now. That's what I like to hear. And I'm glad you're all moved and settled. Uh, Oliski says, do you think you could do a quick house in Unreal with your modular piece and put a directional light in the sky <laughs> and build it? Uh, Oliski, I, I don't really want to do that at this stage. Um, I, uh, once we've saved this camera workout, because I don't want to, the, the guys have been waiting for me to finish this cinematic for so long. <laughs> uh, I really want to get it done. Uh, maybe once that's done, then we can... I can jump back into Unreal quickly because I do want to move on to doing photogrammetry for the guys after this. Um, but we can certainly maybe do some tests then. Uh, I, I, I don't want you to think that I'm, you know, want to ignore you. I don't. I do want to help and I will help. But I just want to get the camera stuff done. But I want to make sure you put an importance volume in your level and rebuild the lighting and see what that does. That's the first thing, okay? Must make sure you've got an importance volume. It's a simple thing. You just get it's just a, a volume here, an importance volume. Just drag it in, scale it up to fit your whatever whatever size your level is. Okay, good. I'm um, sorry, Oliski, but yeah, and I will help. But make sure you have an importance volume number one. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about in uh, with normals was normals. So let's say we have our piece here that's that's our panel. Okay, that's our panel piece. What I have noticed with Unreal is if you don't have enough, if, you, if the normals are too spread apart, you can get that weird shadowing. So if I throw down uh, an edit normal on this, where are we? Here we are. You see the normals are really only on the edges. Those, those blue lines, that represents the normal direction and that's where the normals are. So because that's one plane, there are really only normals here in the corners. Now, when you use Unreal or any game engine, it automatically uh, converts quads to tries, to triangles. So it turns a, a, a quad mesh into a tri mesh. Yeah, during the stream isn't the best time, uh, Oliski, but um, yeah, I'm glad you understand. But yeah, just getting back to this normals thing. Um, I have noticed with Unreal, if, if the mesh is too low poly on a flat plane like this. It can cause issues with uh, lighting like that. Uh, and again, another way to test that will be just to um, to divide up your mesh a little bit more. So instead of just using one quad here, I'm going to put, as an example for you, um, th there's a modifier here called um, Quadify Mesh. I'm just gonna remove that edit normals. Throw down a Quadify Mesh. We can see in the viewport here what that has done. It's, it's made it much more high poly. Of course, we can knock that back. It doesn't need to be that high poly. If I put the quad size at, say, 8. But now, if I put an edit normals down, you see what's happened? The normals are much more evenly spread right across the face, face of that plane. Uh, and it's the normals that 
can cause problems with lighting sometimes. So that's something else to try as well. If you once you make sure you've got your importance volume in Unreal, if you're still getting that problem when you rebuild the lighting, I would just try maybe making your mesh a little bit higher res. It doesn't have to be this high still. It can be a bit lower than that even. So if I go back here and I make it, um, let's try 12 and go back up to the edit normals, even that will be fine. I, and I know you, you don't want to, you want to try and keep your poly counts as low as possible. That's understandable. But this can sometimes fix those sort of problems as well. And it's, it's usually a problem on a flat plane, like a panel piece. So try that as well, Oliski. Uh, try the importance volume first to see if that fixes the problem. If that doesn't fix the problem, then try just just um, slicing your mesh up a little bit more to make it a little bit higher res. Now, if you're using Blender, I don't know if you've got a quantify mesh that you can add in Blender. Uh, yes, I have done interior archviz, Oliski. That's I do some of that sort of stuff now for the studio I work at. Uh, yep. You, yeah, I definitely can do that good. Yeah, try that. I just want to try and help you. But, but you know, and in the meantime, until we can sort of uh, demo it in Unreal for you, but uh, make sure you have an importance volume. If, if the importance volume doesn't fix it, the next thing I would suggest is to make sure your normals are correct. Uh, do I meet, do I build art, the modular pieces for Archbiz? One mesh for the wall? Uh, yeah, I use one whole mesh for the wall. Uh, generally in Archbiz when I'm using V-Ray. It's not like a game engine where you've got to be careful of um, how much memory you're using and that sort of thing. Because it's running in real time. So usually in Archbiz I'm less concerned about poly counts and I, I build it as one piece instead of pieces, modular pieces. If I do Archviz and I'm doing I'm using V-Ray or a renderer. Hey Galen, good to see you, buddy. I was gonna check you out last night. I noticed you were streaming, but I was just heading to bed. You were working on um, on your ship again. And I thought, oh I wanna say hello, but if I say hello then I'm gonna be caught in chat for a while and I was really tired. <laughs> but I hope you're well, Galen. It's good to see you. Uh Oliski says, do you build modular pieces? For Archbiz, one mesh. Oh, uh, Oliski says, oh, you mean UE4? Uh, if I was doing Archbiz in UE4, I would, pro unless I'm doing particular design pieces, um, I'd probably use one mesh. And uh, if I was doing Archbiz in UE4 for the whole wall. I th yeah. Um, if I'm doing Archbiz, yeah. If, if you're making a game, you're probably better doing modular because you're going to be use less memory. But Archbiz, again, you're not really worried about memory so much. But I'd still use modular pieces like those panels you see in my building because I wanted that design. And using a modular piece will save me memory than having that all as one mesh because I can reuse it again and again. And use it in other parts of the building as well, so... Sniper says, in Blender, go into edit mode and hit W and select subdivide. There you go. On the bottom left menu, you will see segment count. So there you go, Oliski. You, because you're using Blender, do what Sniper has just suggested. Uh, because like I said, I've noticed with, with flat pieces of geometry like a panel like this, Unreal can sometimes cause, uh, can sometimes, uh, those, those lighting issues, those shadowing issues can sometimes be caused by the fact there aren't enough normals for the engine to calculate the lighting properly. It's not a pro that's not because Unreal is doing anything incorrect. It's just it doesn't have enough information to throw the the shadow incorrectly. Oliski says, "Well, anyway, I'm I'm going to work on it and send some more photos." Okay, you do that. Pop. Remember, guys, don't pop links in Twitch chat unless you're a sub. But everyone can post links in Discord. Type exclamation Discord or click on that blue graphic below my stream to join the Discord server. Uh, Galen says, we'll be back in about 14 hours. <laughs> okay, well, I'll try and check you out again. I've got a lot of work on at the moment, so I'm working quite late now. <laughs> because I had that week off where I couldn't do anything. My, my workload backed up, so I've got to try and catch up. Oh, you know, Oliski says, okay. He was just trying to help Oliski. <laughs> 
Let's close Max down. No, I don't want to save that. But yeah, do, do check the normals as well. And make sure you have an importance volume. You don't need a post-process volume like I have, although I would suggest you use one because they're really useful and really helpful. You can use the post-process volume to do LUT color correction, to make uh, adjustments to the um, ambient occlusion on objects, all that sort of stuff. So having a post-process volume is really helpful. Not necessary, but I would always use one, but you must, must, must have an importance volume. Uh, Aliski says, I highly, doubt <clears throat> I highly doubt it's the problem, but uh, have tried a bunch of things. It'll be better, I think, if you see it by trying it in your recall. Uh, but again, I haven't run into that problem here with my lighting. I, I don't know. But again, my panel pieces are pretty, um, are not just a, flame, a flat plane. I've added some, some geometry to them. So if I go inside my building, even, even these pieces here, they're, um, they're panel pieces that I reuse around the building. And I still, and I haven't run into that problem with the lighting on them either. So I am um, just not sure why you could be having that problem. See here, you see I use this panel piece quite a bit. Upstairs I use it a lot more. And I don't have that shadow problem on those. And I also don't have it on the uh, wooden panels that I showed you yesterday, which are, um, which are here. So I, I, I don't really know what else it could be really. having a look through my list here to see if there's anything else that could be a problem. I'm just going to turn off that plane out reflection. Yeah, I don't know really what else it could be because, uh, yeah, I use these panels everywhere and I've not run into that problem with, um, with shadowing. Uh, Aluski says, yeah, I made an arch for his interior already, but all my meshes were one piece of mesh for my wall. Okay, well, you can do it that way. You can make them all one piece, and that way you certainly won't, you shouldn't run into that problem. Uh, Galen says, importance is important. That's exactly right, Galen. Important, importance is important. That's why they call it an importance volume in Unreal, because it's important. You must, must have one. You really, um, you're making the engine work unnecessarily. You're going to slow your level down unnecessarily because the, what Unreal is going to do when it rebuilds the lighting is it's, it's going to throw those rays throughout the entire level. And the level could be like 2K by two, two kilometers by two kilometers. And you're only using an area that's maybe 500 meters by 500 meters. So it's wasting a lot of time throwing that inside of your level. And it's going to decrease the quality of your lighting because it's it's calculating stuff that's unnecessary out on the side. So, importance volume important, as Galen said. It's a movable light. Uh, that light, I don't have a problem with movable. Again, most of my lights are movable as well. Um, static lights and Unreal. I don't it, I don't know if it's a limitation of the engine or of a graphics card, but. I, it, and it used to be this way, and it may have changed, but you, at, you, at one stage you couldn't have more than eight static lights. Uh, once you go above eight, then it starts to, the engine starts turning other static lights off. So to avoid that, I suggest everyone use movable lights. Uh, or try and avoid static lights anyway. Uh, movable lights used to cost more performance-wise. I don't think they do anymore. And you won't run into that problem where you can only use so many before the engine starts turning some off. Yeah, Sniper says he tried to replicate it in UE4 and couldn't. I, I haven't had the problem either. Um, I'm using 419.2, not the 420 version. Before I move on, any advice on lighting and shadowing? Um, Make sure, my advice would be use movable lights when you can. So you see this, this is a, a spotlight. Actually, this, this I think might be, this is a, um, a prefab. So if I double click it so I can get into the light itself, 
You see, that's a point light throwing just general light and it's set to movable. Try to avoid setting to static. You can set to stationary or movable and I always generally select movable. That's my first thing. Uh, what else? What else? I don't think I really change much else when it comes to lighting, to be honest. You can know the intensities of defaults at one. Oh, actually, it might default. The default is one, so I don't change that. The volumetric scattering defaults to three. I don't change that. Um, I only ever change the intensity and the attenuation radius, really. So yeah, my voice, make sure, stick to movable lights. That's the best way to go. Avoid static as much as you can. I have used some static lights, but I generally use movable. Uh, that's really the only advice for the interior, because apart from that, you don't need to do much else, to be honest. Yeah, and you see here, I get no problem with my lighting. It, there's no weird shadowing going on. Yeah, don't use a static light, Eliski. Use a movable light. You're going to run into problems with static lights. The limitation on the number of them, uh, the fact that the engine will start to turn some on and off if you're um, using too many. Uh, movable is much more reliable. So, movable, more reliable than static. And that's why most of the time I use movable. But that and the fact too that um, I don't think if you want to make a game for a mobile or, or a tablet, I don't think they support static lights. I think they only support movable from memory. I could be wrong. I'm not, I've not looked into it enough because I'm not making anything on mobile, but yeah. Uh, Aluski says it's more that static light equals you have to build your light and they create light maps using a second UV. That's exactly right. Uh, it saves the light map out if you're using static lighting yet. Into the second UV channel. That is correct. Um, importance volume. Try that first because it's really important to have an importance volume. Trust me. So that'll be the first thing I try. And if that doesn't work, then I would um, <clears throat> I would look at making sure that you're not using static lighting. Why, why do you want to use static lighting so much? Why do you want it to bake the light map out for you? Do you is there a reason you really want to use a static light over a, over a movable light? Uh, Liski says we'll probably stick with movable, but the UE4 documentation suggests static. Oh, for VR. Sorry, you're using VR. Okay. See, so everybody's use case is different. Whether you're targeting console, PC, mobile, or VR. I wasn't aware of that with VR because I don't do any VR work. Um, right. Now, well, try the importance volume first. That makes a lot of sense now you, why you want to use a static. Try to make sure you've got an importance volume. Um, if you can get away with a movable, I'd still suggest using a movable light uh, over a static light. I try and use as few static lights as possible, and I've used very few. Most of mine are movable. Static is less costly. Yeah, um, well, well, I don't know if it is anymore. I mean. It used to be that way. It, you know, five, six years ago, it used to be that ca the case that static lighting was much more performant than, um, than movable lighting. But from what I've read recently with Unreal, I don't really think that's true anymore. I think movable lights are probably as efficient as static now. Because um, Epic Games have put a lot of, um, a lot of work in, in development of, into movable lights. And of course, the outside, you can't use uh, static, particularly if it's a large outside level, because your shadow, your static lights are going to create huge shadow maps. It's going to, you're going to lose more performance loading those really big shadow maps into memory than you're going to save by using a static light. Yeah, I understand why you, what, what, 
what your advantage of static lighting is because it, it bakes it out uses less memory since it's not real time does it use less memory though really because it's still going to load that texture map into memory so I, I don't know again I haven't really run the numbers on it to do a comparison because I don't do VR work but uh, yeah I think it, it's dependent on what you're working on but after a certain point I would have thought that saving using static lights saving out your shadow maps and then having the, having the engine having to read them back into memory when when it runs it comes to a, cer a certain tipping point where you're not going to be saving anything depending on the level and how big it is but I get where you're coming from that's exactly right Oleski uh, I said my skylight was my only stationary that's that's correct there are a couple of static lights inside the building, but only maybe two or three. And I could switch them out to movable and that wouldn't be a problem. Um, most of my lighting is movable. There are maybe, maybe, maybe three static lights only inside the building. Um, and like I said, if I wanted to, I'd switch them out to movable. I, it's not causing me an issue, but if it was, I'd switch them out to movable. But um, the skylight is static. Yes. The skylight, I think, has to be static. I don't think you can make it movable. Maybe you can, but uh, I'm not changing my time of day, so I'm keeping it static. Uh, Galen says, are you talking system memory or graphics memory? Yeah. Uh, well, everything, I think, is being read into graphics memory when, it run when the engine runs. Like now, at the moment, with the, um, with the building in the background there, that, that's all loaded into into graphics GPU memory so uh, I think he's talking GPU memory what, what do you want to see <laughs> no you can't see them because I can't I couldn't I, I'd have to go through them I've got so many lights so let's get in this level um, well you know the chandeliers that you just saw when I was inside the building that hang above the steps each one of those chandeliers uses like one two three four five six about eight lights. Just one chandelier uses about eight different movable point lights. Because each light bulb in that chandelier, I put a point light on to throw light out from. Uh, so yeah, and so I've got a lot of lights inside that building. Uh, it'll take me forever to find the static ones. Um, why did I decide? Uh, well, that's a good question. You're asking why I decided to keep them static. Um, uh, there was really no reason. Um, I started using static lights and then I decided I'd switch to movable because I liked, when I did a rebuild on the lighting, I found using a movable light gave me a nicer looking shadow. Not, not that I was getting that problem that you're having, but I found movable lights to be nicer and easier to work with, which is why I suggest you use movable because you're not going to run into these sort of shadow problems. Um, so yeah, less likely to cause shadow problems. I found the shadows looked a bit nicer. And then it gave me the option for our cinematic where if I wanted to change the light at all, I could do it while I, I could change it on the like, like while the level was running. That's the advantage of a movable light. I could move the light, I could change its intensity, all that sort of stuff uh, in real time, which you can't really do in a static light. You can't move a static light. Um, so yeah, so like if I wanted to have maybe a ball of energy traveling down the hallway, I could change the lighting by making it move. By making it movable allowed me to, to have that dynamic looking lighting. Not that I'm going to be doing that, but. <laughs> Lazy joke, uh, Galen says. But yeah, I, I, if I was you, I, I'd... Um, I'd make sure that your lighting was movable. Again, I'm not doing VR though, so I really don't want to. If Epic Games suggests static for VR, then that's what they suggest. I mean, they know better. Um, but you're really going to have to be careful of how many static lights you have, because I know that it used to be a case that you couldn't have more than eight. If you had more than eight, I think it was a limitation in graphics cards. So again, it could have changed now. It, it, but if you had more than eight, it used to start turning some off. I'm just going through this camera. I want to get this camera um, changed. I don't like this camera shot. I want to start doing a couple of shots of the building now, but I really don't like um, 
the starting shot here is okay but when we get about halfway through here uh, the rail pulls back here to the to the rocks and stuff and I really don't like that I don't like the shape of the rock here either wait it's pointy like that that's because the mesh is only like 3,000 polys uh, so I want to try and avoid use, uh, seeing that so we're going to move our rail I think let's jump into the viewport here and uh, I can get an aerial perspective so I can see where our rail is going so yeah I think I'll keep it here like I like the beginning of the uh, cinematic it's just towards the end I think I might pull the rail out no problem and we will we will um keep posting in discord make sure you try an important volume to see if that helps at all it, it will help with all lighting not just movable so make sure you put an importance volume down and we can go from there um, and it, like it may not be um, a problem with your uh, your normals but keep that in mind too sometimes it can cause problems if you don't have enough, enough normals on a flat mesh or a flat plane I'm gonna move this forward I'm actually gonna move my camera and my timeline up to about where that is so that when we move it we can see what's going on here there my camera is about about there now So as I move it, I can get an idea of what a camera is doing. Let's move the end one as well. In fact, I'm going to move to the end of the animation and then we'll adjust it. I like seeing the bull rushes just um, just in shot there. I think that looks cool. So let's move our camera back. Uh, again, I'm just going to play the animation through here in the viewport. There's our power pole, and it was actually you, Galen, that um, made me put that in because we were talking when you were in the stream one day, and we were talking about the lights inside the building. And I realised I didn't have any power coming into the building, so what, how are these lights light lit? I mean, the power could have been underground, I guess, but uh, I thought putting a, a, a power pole there in the background and running a wire into the house was cool. It was a cool thing, a cool way to show that we're getting power into the building. Uh, and that was because of this, you asked me, I think, was it gas lighting? <laughs> and that's what made me think, hmm, no, they're actually light bulbs, so they should be getting power. I think at the beginning of the animation here, there's, um, yeah, when we go through the tree there, I don't like that. Uh, Galen says, I think that was why I was asking. Yeah, I think, it, I think it might, I might have been right. <laughs> and it was something I completely forgot about because... When I work in ArchBiz, we don't generally worry about that sort of thing either. Like, if we show the outside of a, a, of a high-rise building or a, a, t a townhouse, we don't normally model in the power going into the building, um, So, which is why I forgot about it. That's my excuse anyway. But I, th I think it's a cool thing to show because it, it helps to add a bit more realis realism to the, um, to the scene. If you see that there's, you know... A power pole here and there's a wire running power to into, into the building it makes it more believable <laughs> although this house in the hollow uh, how it's getting power I don't know because remember once you go through those gates and you're stuck in the hollow here you can't get back out again so you're stuck here forever so I don't know how power is getting in but anyway I'll explain later as they say on TV 
when you're watching a movie and uh, some plot twist happens and yeah they'll expi- or, or Doctor Who for that matter they say it in Doctor Who all the time I'll explain later um, Galen says the gas lights would be appropriate for the period of the- they, they would I agree they would have been appropriate but if I used gas lighting I probably would have had to introduce some flicker and stuff to make it more believable and yeah more work than I wanted to do really not that it's a lot of work, it's just a shader, but yeah, <laughs> true. But be, uh, that and the fact that all of the lights had already been modelled as um, light bulbs. So, yeah, I couldn't, it, for me to turn it into gas lighting, I would have had to have replaced all the bulbs and every light in the building. And there's a lot of lights in that building. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't like the beginning here where it travels through the tree there. I think that's got to be fixed. Uh, this sort of where we where we move down to show this tree trunk that'll help the viewer put in context where the building is because we show that tree trunk in a couple of different shots so that'll orientate the viewer as to where they are inside of the of the, of the uh, world so that's cool I don't mind that we pan down and we see the um, power pole in the background too which is cool well, no the rail won't be rendered that's a good question because a lot of people would think um, what's going on there yeah, if you, if you look in the viewport while it plays through, you sometimes see the rail appear in the corner here, or you see the rails here as well. They won't be rendered. They're only visible in the viewport. As soon as you start saving that out, uh, Unreal hides all of them. So you, you'll never see them. But it's a good question because, yeah, it's something you'd think, well, I can see the rail there. Am I going to get that when I render out my movie? You won't. No. All right, let's... um move our camera at the beginning I think you, I didn't think they would be but I figured I would ask yeah no it's a good question because it's I was curious about it myself until I started rendering out the shots I thought Unre- uh, Epic Games was smart enough not to um, not to allow that problem to occur and they were so yeah no no rails will be rendered no camera cranes will be rendered or, or even just single cameras in the scene they won't be rendered out if you can see them as well so you can you can completely cover your your um, level in rails, which I pretty much have here with all the cameras we got going on. They won't be rendered, but it is a good question because yeah, it's something you might not realise or you might worry about when you see all these rails going on. Yeah, this this here where we're going through this tree here, I don't like that. So I'm going to find where we are, and we are here. We're about here somewhere. My camera, my camera is there. I can just make it out in amongst the tree there. Okay. Uh, I don't like the camera going behind the tree like that. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull it forward. So if we pull our rail forward. I'm not moving the camera. I'm just moving the rail. Let's scrub through our timeline and see what that gets us. So we start with the building partly occluded by that big tree there in the foreground. We move around over the rocks. Then we start to pan the camera around as we move closer to the building. Until we focus on that power pole and move down to the tree trunk at the bottom there. So again, I'm just going to play that through on loop. And again, I know I just, it looks. I know it's a little choppy, and that's the reason I render the cameras out, and we we review them on Mondays of each stream, so we can get a nice smooth uh, overview of what's going on. Um, but it certainly gives us an idea, and it. The reason that it's choppy like that is because Unreal is set to cinematic mode, which is, you know, everything is turned up maximum, maximum, maximum. You, you never really want to run your level that high, but unless you're making a cinematic, which is what we're doing. <laughs> that and the fact that there's a lot, lot of st- stuff going on in this level, 
lots of plants, lots of grass, lots of trees, lots of stuff inside the building because it's fully furnished. So we have to forgive the engine for being a little bit choppy. Um, if we wanted to turn this level into a game, we could, but we'd have to go through and do some optimization. Like uh, on most of the objects I'm using three textures, that's not good, you'd only want to use one texture, so we'd have to go through and um, optimize all of our textures to uh, render them out to one texture as opposed to three different textures for each object. Because that, that's using more memory, that's going to slow the engine down because there's more draw calls, all that sort of stuff. But I think uh, our camera here is okay. I don't think we're going through any... We, we fixed the problem at the beginning when we were going through those trees. We fixed the problem at the end where we were seeing that rock where it was too pointy and low res. And we're focusing in on our dead tree trunk there and we're seeing our bull rushes in the foreground. You call them cat's tails, I think, in the United States. We call them bull rushes here in Australia. They're those things that grow in water, those brown sort of looking things. And when they pop open, they have all of our little seed pods in them that you see flying around in the sky here, those sort of little white seed pods. Scanlon says, for this cinematic, are you going to have different speeds as it goes along the rail? Uh, I am, Galen. Yep. I can do that, that's why we're rendering out at 60 frames a second, so that I can do some slow motion or speed it up if I wanted to at different parts. I'm going to, I'm not going to overuse that because it can get a bit, um, a bit stale if you use it too much, but it, some, yeah, and, and the continuity can start to, it can start to look a bit weird if some things are fast, some things are slow, some things are normal, sparingly, using it sparingly. But I will, I will be doing that, yep. The camera I showed you guys before that I just played on the in VLC, there's the two versions, the normal speed and then the slow motion version. Um, so I, I'm going to do that, yeah. For some parts. Uh, Galen says, we call them both here in the States, but it really depends on the part of the country you're from. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Well, there you go. You learn something new every day. So, yep, um... Cattails and bull rushes. We generally call them bull rushes in Australia, no matter where you are in, the, in Australia. I think this camera shot's okay. It's a good overview um, of the building. So I think that'll work for what we want. And we see our bull rushes, cat's tails here in the, in the foreground. Um, okay, so if I jump back into my perspective here, I'm just going to deselect the rail. Um, we've got enough shots of the pond, I think. We don't need any more shots of the of the pond area here. Where is it? There it is. I think that that's all fine. Um, I do want to do some shots of the deer up here in the, in the background, but we'll tackle that maybe tomorrow or next week because I want to get some shots of the building now because the building is our star in our cinematic. It's the thing that the person... Our cinematic is going to spend more time in the building than anything else and it's the whole reason for the cinematic is to show the building and the interior of the building so Galen says I was asking about the speed because the speed going up over the rocks seemed a bit fast to you oh, okay well we can certainly slow all that down because yeah uh, again for those people that weren't here at the very beginning of the stream I will just play those two versions that I was talking about where we because we're rendering at 60 frames a second we have the option to slow stuff right down. So one of our shots here, shot 28, this is the normal speed shot. So it's playing at normal speed. But because we're rendering each shot out at 60 frames a second, that means when we go into Premiere Pro, we can create some really cool slow motion. We can obviously speed it up as well, but we can slow it right down. And this is the same shot playing at 60 frames a second. You see how much slower it is? Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll do that with a couple of the shots here. We'll sort of alternate between some normal play, no, normal speed and some slow motion stuff like this. Uh, Ganon says, so do, you, so do you can that animal a buck, a stag, or a, or a heart? We call, or, I call the, um, the main one with the big horns, a buck, and the other ones I call, or a stag, a buck or a stag, actually, I call them both. And the other ones are just called deer, the ones, you know, without the horns. 
So yeah, we will be doing slow motion as shown in that shot just there. Um, back in back to our deer here. Yeah, I, I call the middle one. I generally call the middle one there a stag, and the other two a deer. So, no horns a deer. Horns I call it a stag. A, a buck. I've, uh, uh, yep, I'm familiar with the word buck as well. And they will be animated, so we'll tackle that when we start doing some close-up shots of our of our buck or stag and our deer. Because remember, we've got bunnies in the backyard as well. Let's have a look at our bunnies. I haven't seen my bunnies for a while. Uh, we'll tackle the bunnies at the very end because the end of the cinematic is when we fly out the back door. So the, uh, the last part of our cinematic here will be coming out of this doorway here and um, moving back into the forest in the backyard here. And in the backyard here, we've got our bunnies. We call them, we call them hares in Australia, H-A-R-E. There are little, little bunny rabbits there. And again, they'll be animated as well. We'll do some close-up shot on them. Because they're cute. I did have um, other animals like foxes and stuff, but I decided not to use them. Yep, are they bunnies, rabbits, or hares? We, we call them hares, hares in Australia. If they're a wild rabbit, we call them a hare. If they're a domestic pet, we usually call it a rabbit. Um, they're a bit of a blight in Australia with the farmers. The farmers have a real problem with um, hares eating their crops and stuff like that. So yes, our, our bunnies will be, um, we'll tackle them at the end. I want to get a couple of shots though of this sun peeking through trees like this as well. So let's start doing some of those. Actually, before we do that, let's do some shots of the building. If I start getting off tangent here, I'll get lost. Let's do some building shots first. Smurfberry Barbecue, good to see you Smurfberry, how are you? Did you have a good weekend Smurfberry Barbecue? I hope you're well, I hope it's not too hot for you guys in the US as well, depending on where you are I guess in the US. My, I, I feel for you guys in Europe at the moment going through your heat wave. Um, you guys heard me bitching about the heat last year when we were in summer and guarantee I'm going to bitch about it when summer comes this year, so I'm not looking forward to summer in Australia. <laughs> It was okay. Good to hear, Smokeberry. Uh, Galen says, in the U.S. here, in the U.S., hares are different than rabbits and uh, are differentiated by the sliminess of the body and length of the ears. I didn't know that, that, that they could get slimy. Or slimness. I can't read. <laughs> Even with the new glasses, I can't read. Slimness of the body and the length of, their, of the ears. Oh, okay. You could be right here as well. Generally, in any wild rabbit, we call a hare in Australia, or a, and a domesticated pet, we call a rabbit. Usually, that's the way it goes. And Galen says, hares are skinnier and have longer ears. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't read. Slimy. I never heard a rabbit called slimy, but that's, that's my brain not reading properly. I thought slimy. I've heard snakes be called slimy, but not um, well, lizards, but not not hares. <laughs> slimmer, they're slimmer. Um, I, I, I had a rabbit as a pet when I was younger. I had a kangaroo as a pet when I was younger as well. There you go. I'm talking when I was really young, like when I was four or five years old. I have photographs that my parents took because I can't remember back that far um, of me playing with this kangaroo, this mini can baby kangaroo that was a pet of mine in my backyard. Uh, ever seen a jackalope? No, I haven't, Galen. What's a jackalope? Is that like a rabbit as well? No, I haven't seen a jackalope. I've never heard the word jackalope either. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think my parents got rid of the um, kangaroo when it started to get a bit older because I was telling you guys, they, they can be quite dangerous if they kick you. They could break your ribs and all that sort of stuff if they're big enough. So probably not, not a great pet for a five-year-old. Uh, but w when I had it as a pet, it was just a, a joey, a baby kangaroo. Uh, Galen says, it's a cross between a jackrabbit, aka a hare, and an antelope. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but a cross between a rabbit and an antelope. 
So it doesn't really exist. This is some fictional thing you're creating. <laughs> it looked cool. It looked very cool. Um, Smurpery says, Taxidermy jackrabbit with antelope horns. Oh, okay. <laughs> Taxidermy is creepy. I'm sorry, but uh, if you if you like that sort of thing, but I find it creepy. Stuffed dead animals. Gross. Gross. Yeah, it just, I just find that creepy. Creepy, creepy, creepy. But hey, if you're into that sort of thing, more power to you. <laughs> uh, but it would look cool. And a rabbit, a rabbit with um, with horns. Now I'm just moving around here. I want to, I want to sort of get a, uh, get a position that might be cool for a camera. Remember, I said to you guys, I find the easiest way for me to work out how I want to make a camera shot is to jump into my viewport here and just move around until I get sort of like an idea of how I want my camera to look. Uh, Smurfbury says, Google the black market work on an outlaw taxidermist for some fun. Okay, I will. Google, oh, so you got to Google the black market work of an outlaw taxidermist. I'll check that out after the stream. Uh, yeah, so I want to try and get a shot of uh, a couple of shots of our building, some interesting shots. Now, I am going to create a shot not at the moment, but a shot where we start moving through the doorway when we start to first enter the building. But for these shots, I'm more concerned with just an overall outside shot that looks cool. Uh, Galen says, an aunt had a stuffed deer head in her living room. On the other side was a bathroom and had the stuffed other end hanging in there. Oh, wow. So the head was in one on one wall and the rear was on the other. <laughs> on the other side of the wall. Okay, 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 I see where you're coming from. So the head was on this side of the wall and the rear was on this side of the wall. That's, that's interesting. I, I still wouldn't put that sort of thing in my house. <laughs> I don't like stuffed animals, dead, dead stuffed things. You know how some people get their pets stuffed after they die? because they love them and they want them with them all the time. Uh, I find that creepy as well. I mean, you guys know, we, I, I had a, a little a cat that I'd had for 20 years from when she was a kitten. And she died about a year and a half ago. Um, she lived until she was 20, which is old for a cat. Uh, and the thought of having her stuffed and sitting beside me would just freak me out. So yeah, I don't get that either where people want to stuff their pets because they love them so much. They want to keep them around. No, 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 no. That's sick, I tell you, it's sick. I shouldn't say that, should I? I'm going to get all this hate now from these people that say, I love my pet and I love having it stuffed and sitting beside me. How dare you tell me that I'm sick? That's fine. If you want to do it, that's fine. No judgments, no judgments. The eyes are the creepiest. Yeah, I agree. Because they put those glass eyes in, don't they? So you've just got this animal that's constantly staring at you. It's freaky. It's freaky. That and doing the work, I, I'd find having to gut the animal and stuff it. Yuck. Yuck. Oh, yuck. I couldn't imagine doing that. Ooh, no. No. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, let's set up a shot here of the side of the building. And I like the grass down here in the, in the, I like seeing a little bit of grass there because all of our grass is movable, of course. It's all wind animated. So it doesn't move a lot because, you know, it's, it's short grass, but it does move a little bit when the level plays. <clears throat> so let's set up a shot here where we, we're looking at the side of the building and maybe we will move our camera up. We might just do a simple camera movement where we move the camera directly up. That could be cool. We'll, we'll get a couple of different shots of the building from different angles, different types of cameras. But I think for this shot, I just want to do a camera shot where we see the grass, start with the grass and move our camera straight up. Galen says, well, I have, I have, an, a, I have a dearly dependent cat sitting on my shelf in a little urn. Oh, well, that's different though. 
your dearly departed cat sitting on your shelf with an urn. And I, mean, I get that. I, I get that because people do that with their relatives, you know, if they have them cremated. If they don't want to have them interned in, in a cemetery, they put them in an urn and keep them on the, uh, the mantle sort of thing. That, that's, that's, that's fine. I don't, that, that's okay. I, I probably wouldn't do it because I'd still find it a little bit disconcerting. Um, but that's, that's not creepy like having a stuffed animal with you, like stuffing your dead pet and having it sitting next to you on the couch sort of thing. Mm. No. Uh, I didn't do that with my cat when she died. Um, well, she actually, I had to have her put down in the end because she was getting so old that she couldn't drink properly. She couldn't eat properly. She was in pain all the time. And you can tell because she used to meow in that painful way. Uh, because her kidneys were starting to shut down. Um, yeah, she was she was in, in the wars in the end, and I put it off for as long as I could because I didn't want her to go. Um, but in the end, I had to call the bed out, and he gave her an injection, and he came out to to my to my house here, to my apartment, gave her an injection while she was in my lap, and then she went to sleep and died. And then the vet took her away, so. Um, Galen says, I had to put her down due to feline cancer. Yeah, I get where you're coming from. Like I said, I had to um, I had to put Annabelle down as well because her kidneys were starting to shut down. She was just getting too old. She was having problems drinking, problems eating, problems walking. Um, yep, I didn't want to do it, but I had to because it, no, it's not fair on the animal when they're in pain. To keep them around just because you're selfish and you don't want them to go. Um, unfortunately, in our society, or fortunately, depending on how religious you are, I guess, um, we, we don't have the luxury of deciding if we're in pain that we want to die. At least not in this country, in Australia. You can't, um, you can't choose when to take your life. You've just got to be kept alive for as long as you can until you naturally die. Um, that's why a lot of Australians that do want to choose when they die go overseas to places like Switzerland, where it is legal. No, that's okay, Galen. That's that's cool. I mean, I still miss Miss Annabelle, but she's not in any pain anymore. That's what's important. So <laughs> let's get off the subject. I will start crying. Yeah, she's she's in no more pain. That that's that's what I think about the fact that she's um she's. Not in pain anymore, so. Uh, let's do a save all here so we can save what changes we made to our camera, to the last camera. And let's create a new empty shot here. Let's duplicate it. And what, what camera shot are we up to? Are we up to 30? Yep, shot 30. So duplicate. And we're gonna call this one shot 30. Let's open that up. So it's a new blank shot. Uh, now I'm going to bring in a cinematic camera. I'm not going to use a rig or a rail because I'm only going to move the camera directly up. So let's pull in our cinematic camera. Let me get it into position here. I'm going to move it to around about yeah. Just going to pull it up a little bit as well, so it's not actually in the ground. Uh, Galen says, "So, did you hear about Steven Seagal the last couple of days? No, what's Steven Seagal been up to? What's going on? Give me the gossip, Galen." What what's what's what, what's the what's going on with Steven Seagal? Smurfberry says, "Oh God, what's happened? Tell me, I, I, I'm out of the loop. Tell me, tell me, what's happened? What's going on with Steven Seagal? What's he done? What's going on?" <laughs> Smurfberry says, "I don't know what it is, but it can't be good. I have to agree. Anytime Steven Seagal gets up to anything." Uh, Galen says, Putin named him 
cultural liaison between the US and Russia, since he is also a Russian citizen. I didn't know he was a Russian citizen. Wow. And Putin has made him the cultural liaison. Wow. I thought Trump was a liaison for the US and was Russia's liaison in the US. <laughs> oh, I'm being cheeky. You guys know I don't I don't I don't get into the politics thing. You vote for whoever you want to. You you know, you're an adult, or you should be watching me. Uh, and if you're not, when you are an adult, you can vote for whoever you want to. <laughs> oh no, Galen says he's the puppet. Okay. I, I, like I said, I don't want to. I don't, I don't want to po comment on politics, particularly U.S. politics, because I'm an Australian. I've got no business talking about your president. Um, if I want to bitch about the people, the, our politicians in this country, fair enough. But I have to say, what is going on between between Putin and Trump? What, what's that all about? As an Australian, I find it very strange. Has Putin got something on him? What's going on? <laughs> Does he just want to be friends with Putin? Because, you know, like he says, it's better to be friends than enemies. I don't know. It's just weird. It's weird. Uh, Galen says, I wonder if Australian would, would grant asylum. <laughs> so Murphy says, yeah, you can complain about our politics. I don't like doing that, though. I'm going to complain about our about your coal mines. You go, you have at it, Smurfberry Barbecue. You guys complain about our coal mines all you want, and I will join you. I think it's disgraceful. Our politicians, our Liberal Party are in power at the moment. We have two major parties, the three in, in Australia. There's Labor, Liberal and Greens. And they all have um, people in the Senate, so they're all represented. But the federal politics, the Liberal Party are in power at the moment, and they're the party of big business. So they love the coal mines, love the coal mines. Um, the, but the coal mines are terrible. You've only got to look at the um, global warming in, in Europe to see what's going on, that drought that's happening in Europe. That is global warming, and that is being caused by burning too much coal, too many fossil fuels. It's terrible for the environment, terrible for the atmosphere. You know, we're all going to bake. And these companies making millions of dollars like Rio Tinto, all the big mining companies, which we have a lot of in Australia, um, they don't care because they make money hand over fist. They don't care about the environment. And it's not good enough. We all have to live on this planet. We're all stuck here. So we better start treating it a bit better, I think. So you you complain about the coal mines all you want, Smurper, and I'll join you. Uh, Cookie, good to see you, Cookie. How are you? Uh, Cookie says, I just vote for Neil deGrasse Tyson for every... <laughs> uh, that's right. Vote for Neil. Neil deGrasse Tyson for everything. Uh, Galen says, do you mine the new clean coal like they do in the US? No, they don't. We, we don't have clean coal in this country, Galen. We have dirty coal. The, there are two different types of coal. Dirty coal, clean coal. Uh, I, I, I'm not up on it myself, but I know in Australia we have a lot of what they call brown coal, which is really dirty coal. So it creates a lot of pollutants when you burn it. Um, I'm not saying we don't have clean coal, but most of it is dirty coal, brown coal that, that, that we have in Australia, that we dig up and sell to the rest of the world. And it's really, really bad. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> uh, Smurfberry says, so I just found out that Fallout 76 is probably not going to be purchasable via Steam. Really? That's that's the new, the new Fallout, isn't it? That... Um, the new multiplayer format Fallout that uh, Bethesda are creating, isn't it? Fallout 76. I love Fallout. I played Fallout 3, I played Fallout 4. I love the Fallout games, but because you guys know I'm not a multiplayer gamer, I like single player gaming, I won't be buying Fallout 76 either way. Because I'm pretty sure it's just multiplayer. And I don't want none of that. I want my single player action, my, my single player um, experience. I'm just going to add the camera to the um, to the shot track here and change our sensor height to 18. Uh, Cookie says, yeah, a lot of companies are making their own launcher clients. Yeah, I heard about that. Um, Epic Games, you know, Fortnite. Is it Fortnite? Um, yeah, Fortnite. I don't think they're selling that on Steam either. They're going to sell it directly from Epic Games' website. Now, 
Fortnite has been a massive hit for them. It, it just made um, Tim Sweeney a billionaire. Fortnite. I mean, he was he was multi millionaire before that, but um, Fortnite has been so successful that uh, Tim Sweeney has just become an official billionaire. And I, I read an article saying that Epic Games were going to sell Fortnite directly from their own website and not sell it on Steam. So there you go. Uh, Smurfy says, yeah, totally excited to have like eight launches installed. Yes, I mean, I'm the same. I've got Origins as well because I, I, I buy a couple of games through Origin and they've got their own launcher. Steam has their own launcher. GOG, I have GOG as well. They have their own launcher. Uh, I prefer GOG though because it's um, DRM free. So that's why I love The Witcher and uh, CD Projekt Red so much because they don't stick all that DRM rubbish in your game that slows it down and slows your PC down. I mean, I get companies wanting to protect their IP. They don't want the game pirated, but the, the CD Projekt Red made uh, Witcher series did really well for them. They didn't use DRM, so there's that excuse you need it otherwise you won't make money just doesn't wash with me um galen says waiting for amazon to buy steam so all my games can be in one library yeah because of course if you um if you're a twitch prime user or a, an amazon prime user and you get the free games that you get through twitch uh you have to use their launcher for that which is the twitch app so yeah i get where you're coming from i don't, I don't know whether um whether Valve would sell Steam though. That's a bit of a cash cow for Valve, particularly considering they're not making Half-Life 3 anymore. Or any games that I'm aware of anymore. Um, they need that cash inflow, so I don't know if, if Valve would ever sell Steam to, to Mr. Bezos. I wouldn't mind if, he, if they did. Um, Smurfery says, I don't buy EA games anyway, I don't like EA either. Uh, anymore though, so at least I don't have the Origin installed. Yeah, I, I have bought I have bought EA games, I have had Origin. In the past, I don't have it installed at the moment because I played the games I bought and I don't want to play them again at the moment, so I mainly buy stuff through Steam or GOG. Uh, Cookie says, I have Steam, that's it. Well, that's all you really need. Uh, Konzui, Konzui, good to see you. How are you? Did you have a good weekend? And uh, Konzui says Epic Games will also uh, Epic Games will also don't launch Fortnite Mobile on the Play Store. Oh, okay. So they're they're going to sell the piece. They're going to sell it through their own website, Epic, and they're not going to put it on the play the Play Store either. Mm, interesting. I get where they're coming from because um, Epic Games will have to pay a commission to to Steam or to the Play Store uh, for every sale that they make. Uh, so I get why Epic Games might not want to do that. Mind you, they'd be breaking the money in. So, yeah, I don't know. It's their game. They they have the right to choose how they want to distribute it. So, And Epic Games, I'm sure, can work it out on their own. And they, they're a big enough company that um, if you buy it through their website, I don't think you'd have problems. Um, so, Konzui, I wasn't sure. I wasn't aware of the Play Store stuff, though. Uh, Cookie says, DRM really works anyway, just gets in the way of paying customers. That's right. If pirates want to pirate a game, they're going to pirate the game anyway. Having DRM in it, uh, depending on the DRM, is only going to slow them down for, you know, maybe a couple of months at most. Uh, eventually, they'll break it. Um, I can't remember the name of the, the really controversial DRM that some game companies are using. But eventually it's going to get pirated anyway. And all you're going to do is piss off your legitimate customers who are paying you good money to buy the game. Uh, so, you know, if you make it hard for them to play the game, well, that stinks. They, they paid you for it. Don't make it more difficult for them. And don't slow their PCs down by running this DRM in the background. That, that's the other thing I don't like about it. Uh, I do get that they want to protect their IP, but not if it slows the machine down. And that affects your game performance then. Uh, Smurperi says, I begrudgingly have Ubisoft's launcher installed because a couple of friends had a couple of Ubi games, but we haven't played them in a long in, in so long that I'm contemplating uninstalling them and the launcher. Yeah, I don't have uh, Origin or anything's launcher anymore. The only, the only launcher I have installed is the Twitch one because I was using a server on Twitch, but we've moved to Discord now. So I haven't opened that up in months and I don't actually claim any of the free games that Twitch um, promote. 
just because they don't interest me. Don't don't tell Twitch that though. Uh, so I don't, I don't claim any of the free stuff you get for being a Twitch member. Um, so I don't. I'm, I might uninstall the Twitch app actually, and the only other app I have is um, is GOG and um, Steam. They're the only two. And that does me. Uh, Smurfery says I've got Epic's launcher because of the UE4 engine and Battle.net for StarCraft. Oh, I have the Epic launcher as well because of yeah because we're working in UE4. But that's the only reason I have Epic stuff on my on my machine. And you, because you, you know everybody that's downloaded Unreal has the launcher, then if Epic release Fortnite through their marketplace, well, they've, got, they've already got a marketplace. They might as well do it. Save some money on um, commissions to other companies using their launchers. Uh, Deiko, Deiko, is it? My apologies if I mispronounce anyone's name. Sorry for taking so long to say hello, Deiko. Good to see you. How are you? Uh, I'll, I'll jump through to Deiko's question here because I missed missed them in earlier in the uh, chat. It says, do you use Substance Designer for the texturing? I use Substance Painter, uh, Deiko. Substance Painter I've been using for the texturing in this um, level that you see here. But I also use Mari as well. And that's what we're going to be doing with the next project. We're going to jump back into Mari. But uh, all of the furniture inside the building and a lot of the texturing was done in Substance Painter, not Designer. Uh, Galen says, I have Twitch Launcher, Steam, Uplay, Battle.net and Origin. You've got them all, Galen. And Galen says, the uh, Banner Saga games Twitch gave away a while ago are actually good single-player story-driven games. I'll oh, check them out because you guys know I like my single-player story-driven gaming. I don't like that multiplayer stuff, but I like the single-player stuff. Let's turn our camera here on for our cinematic in our left viewport. There we go. And we've got our grass stand now. You can see the grass moving a little bit here. <coughs> Let me get a drink of coffee. Um, yeah, so you can see the grass is moving a little bit. It is fully wind animated. We can see our grass, which is what I wanted. Um, did I want to angle it up? That was the other question. So let me jump back into my perspective here. Uh, Deika says, uh, I'm fine, and you? Oh, and thanks for your answer. No problem. My apologies for missing your, your question, um, Deiko. I read everyone line by line. I'm not smart enough to read all the way to, to skim, which is what I should be doing. Uh, good to hear you're fine, and, and I'm, I'm very well. Thank you for asking, Deiko. I'm um, busy with work. Uh, I work in an Archviz studio, and I had to take a week off because I had to get some glasses made up. I was having trouble seeing the screens. Uh, so that I couldn't do any work for a week. I was climbing the walls and that set my schedule back So I've been working seven days a week at the moment, but it's all good. You guys know I love what I do. So it's all good <laughs> But I'm very well. Thank you. I hope you had a great weekend Eco. Again, it says blow harder on the screen to make it move faster <laughs> Not working Galen. Why is it working? No, not working uh, again, uh, when I created the grass in Speed in, in Speed Tree, I made it so the wind animation wasn't blowing a gale. They only move occasionally because it's only supposed to be a light breeze blowing in this in this environment. Um, Deiko says, "I'm sorry if my English is bad. I'm French. That's completely fine. I can understand what you're saying. We have a lot of people from all around the world that pop into my chat that uh, English isn't their first language, so." Your English so far has been fine, and I can generally get the gist of what you're trying to say, uh, so never worry about that. Uh, I wish I could speak French. I love the French language. I think it sounds beautiful when it's spoken. Beautiful language. French and um, Italian are, the, are my two favourite languages to hear when they're spoken. But because I'm in Australia, we, 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 do, we do English and English only here. <laughs> Although I did learn, when I was in school, I learned Japanese, German, Japanese, German, I think they were the only two, neither of which I wanted to speak because I wanted, I like French and Italian and I, we weren't taught French or Italian and I'm not very good at Japanese or German either because it was a long time ago that I learned it. 
Uh, Galen says, that's okay, J. Eco. Phil is Australian. His English isn't great either. There you go. Oh, cheeky. You get a Phil slap for that, Galen. So cheeky. You get a Phil slap. You see, I don't have to, I don't even have to move my hand anymore. So cheeky. But he's right. <laughs> he is right. My English is probably not great either, even though I am English. Or British, part British. I, I was born in Australia, but my mother is British and my father is Lebanese. So I've got a real mix in my blood. Uh, okay, so I was just trying to work out here whether I wanted to angle my camera up anymore or keep it pointed straight. I think I might keep it pointed straight. We can always change it after the fact. So we have our camera here in our cinematic viewport with a bit of our grass showing in the corner. That's the first time you've seen the Bill Slap Mesh Fusion. That's right. And if you're a subscriber, you can do all these on your own. So if you, um, if you, any subs watching me, I'm just going to pop this. If you go pop up, you enter pop up in chat that'll give you a link which gives you uh if you go to that link that's my on my my web page it'll show you all the commands you can use there's about six different ones i'll, I'll add to them over, over time but at the moment there are six uh, all you subs can enter those commands while i'm live on stream and that animation will play back for you on screen for everyone to see so there you go subs you can't do prime sub from mobile no um, but yeah, let, let's do a couple of others. There's a couple of other animations. I'll play them. I've got them on a hotkey here. There's this oops one. The minions. I love the minions. I think they're very cute. So a lot of them are minions at the moment. Uh, like I said, I will um, update them and add to them. So this is another one, which is raspberry. Cheeky little minion. Uh, another one here which is wrecked so if I ever make a mistake on stream you guys can set up the wrecked animation and then there's the uh, stink eye so there you go guys if you want oh, there's a hay fill as well actually I didn't play that one but that's if you want to get my attention in chat you can play that and uh, So let's move our camera here now. So I think our camera, we'll just move it moving straight up. Yeah, you can't do it unless you're a sub Smurf Barry. <laughs> and uh, Konzui, thank you for the follow. I do appreciate it when you guys follow me on uh, Twitch. So thank you very much Konzui for following it. Phil does 3D. Yeah, no, sorry Smurf Barry. You gotta be a sub to actually do the, um, to do the on-screen pop-up. Let's move our camera straight up. So we're going to start at zero. Again, we're using 10 second animations for all of our cameras and we'll edit them back inside of Premiere when we do the final cinematic. Um, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my camera and change the depth of field. Um, I, I want to keep the depth of field the way it is, I think, with the building in focus and the grass out of focus. So, but I don't want it to be, a, I think it defaults to like 100,000. We're going to go to 3,000. <clears throat> Pardon me. And set a key frame. I'm just going to jump to the very end and I'm going to do the same thing. Just set another keyframe at 3000. You don't generally have to do this. But I found with um, <clears throat> with cameras and UE4, sometimes it will lose focus as it plays through the animation. I found the best way to stop that is to uh, set a keyframe for the manual focus distance at the start and at the very end. And that seems to stop it from losing focus halfway through the uh, the camera movement. Uh, Galen says, I usually hate first-person camera views, but they always make me feel like I'm three feet tall. I like first-person. I prefer first-person to third-person when I'm playing a game. I'm, I'm more immersed in the, um, in the environment in first-person. Uh, so my preference is always first-person game. Um, Third person is okay, but first person is what, my pre what, what I prefer. 
because I like that immersion. Um, I'm going to move to the beginning here and set a keyframe for our transform for our camera. So just press S on the keyboard to set those keyframes. Um, now I'm going to move to the end of the animation. Nightbot spamming my links. And we're just going to move the camera up. So I'm going to look in the cinematic here on the left and move it in my perspective here in the, on the right. I'm just going to sort of get up here so I can see what's going on. Let's move our camera up. How high do I want to go? That's the question. I don't know if I really want to go too high. I'm going to move the camera up and see. Um, it might be cool if we go up to maybe the tree line here. That could, that could be interesting. We can see the side of the building. Uh, we can always change it anyway. Let's set a keyframe here by pressing S. We can see our camera movement, just a straight line. Uh, that's I'm not using a crane. I could have used a crane here, but because we're only moving it in one axis only, uh, it's probably not necessary. If I was moving in more than one axis, then I would use a crane. A crane rig. So I'm just going to play that through in a loop again. And it's just a slow pan up the side of the building. That'll be cool. Let's create a new camera. Let's do a save all. I'm not making any other changes to that camera. It's just a very simple camera movement. Because we want a few different shots of the building from different angles that we can cut together inside of our cinematic. Um, let's go back here and create a new shot, which will be shot 31. Let's open that one up. And let's move around in our viewport here so we can decide. Just let me um, deselect my camera there to get rid of that little camera box here in the corner. There we go. Let's decide on another shot for our building. Um, let's get in a good overview shot, of, I think. So maybe if we take a camera, maybe if we take a camera, again, I'm just moving around inside the viewport here to get an, an angle I like the look of. Maybe if we take our camera sort of forward a little bit and up a little bit. Yeah, that, that might be cool. You notice I really like these low shots where we start with the grass. I, I really like, um, I, I think it makes the shot look more interesting. I don't want too much grass. I think we're in the pond here. Yeah, we're in the pond here. Although that could look cool too if we sort of Come, yeah, let's do that. Let's come up like that. So I'm just going to move up so I can see where I want to place my camera. Now for this one, I'm going to use a camera crane rig because we're going to be moving the camera forward as it moves up. Um, and trying to do that by hand just with a camera on its own is not great. You're going to get little, little wobbles and stuff in the camera because you're moving it by hand. It's not going to be nice and smooth. So we're going to use a rig. So let's start with a crane rig. Oop, going to move it up a little bit. Now let's rotate it around. Maybe like that. And I'm actually going to move it back because I want the camera to start where the base of that rig is. So the rig needs to be moved back because the camera is going to go on the end of the rig. Uh, so let's do that. I'm just going to rename this rig too so it's easy for me to find. Hang on, let me undo that. 
I accidentally attached it to something I didn't want to attach it to. There we are. So I'm going to just rename this so it's easy for me to find. I'm going to call this one Z underscore camera rig. Where did it put it? There it is. Let's bring in a cinematic camera now. Let's rotate it around so it's facing in the same direction as our camera rig rail. Crane, not rail, crane. And I'm just going to move it to the end of the um of the arm here. Because that's where it should be. We can either sit it above the arm or below. Generally they go below. So maybe just about there. It doesn't have to go below, but they normally go below on a camera crane. Just going to make sure it's lined up properly. Okay, that should be good. Uh, now all we have to do is attach it to the crane. Where is my crane? There it is. So I'm just going to drag the camera over the crane. Good. Let's select both of those and add them to our shot track. Good. And let's turn on our camera in this viewport so we can see what it's looking at. Good. Uh, the first thing I want to do though is change it to an 18 millimeter camera from a 22. Oh, sorry, from a 20.25 to an 18. That just gives us that uh, letterbox look. Uh, now I can select a crane to move everything. I'm selecting my particles. The particles are very large. And it always happens when I try and select something around the pond. Crane. You want the crane. There we go. Um, let's see here. We might move it back a little bit. Again, I'm looking in the on the left here in the cinematic viewport to see what the camera is doing. It might be interesting. We could maybe come down a little bit more. No, not quite that much. Maybe just like that, so that the uh, grass sort of obscures part of the path there on the left hand side. Alrighty, so we don't want to move the crane anymore, but we want to move, start manipulating the arm. Um, so let's select the crane at zero. Let's set a keyframe for the uh, pitch, the yaw, and the arm length. Now let's move to the end of the timeline. Let's start playing with our pitch, your and arm length. Let's start with the pitch. So we're pulling the cam the crane up. Oh, up, 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 up. Uh, let's have a look at the your. No, we don't really want to pull back. What about the arm length? Just going to pull out of my viewport here so I can see how the crane is behaving. It's a very long crane. 
Um, again, I like the I like the tree leaves in the foreground with the building in the background. Let's let's set a keyframe here. And um, now I've noticed with sequencer, it behaves strangely sometimes when you start setting keyframes. I don't know if it's a bug in this version of the engine. No, normally, if you set keyframes at the start and you try and set keyframes at the end, it it reverts back to the ones from the start. It's weird, but let's have a look anyway. Um, so we've got 54 and 1935. I'm just taking note of those two numbers in case it reverts back when I set a keyframe. So 54 and 1935. You see, it reverted this one back already. I don't know if that's a bug happening in the engine or what it is. Set a keyframe. Set a keyframe on the yaw. We haven't changed the yaw yet though. Let's scrub back through our timeline. So in this one we sort of move forward a little bit on the camera. And then the camera starts to pull up through the tree. See, now I don't like that. I don't like the way we're sort of obscuring a lot of the camera here and part of the shot. Here. If I can get it to a position where it'll show it there. I don't like it being covered like that. So I'm just going to change the uh, arm length here around about the middle of the animation. Let's try it there. Let's set a keyframe at 1091. Only for the arm length, that's the only thing we're changing. So I'm just going to scrub back from the beginning. I don't know if you guys were watching any Twitch streams yesterday, but um, the chat was, they were having problems on Twitch with the chat. No one could chat to anyone. I mean, there were some people saying, oh, that's a good thing. I don't know why. I, don't, I mean, chat is half the fun of Twitch, but uh, again, we're getting this, um, we're, we're going past a branch here. There's a couple of things I can do here, actually, and that's what I might end up doing. I'm going to change the focal length, but let's look at the animation first. So we go through the tree. And again, we're finishing up on the, um, toward the top of the building. So let's have a look at what's happening here with our um, depth of field. Uh, at the moment, the background is in focus with the foreground out of focus. For this shot, because this is the way we did the last shot, we might switch it around. We'll make the foreground in focus. So I'm going to select a camera. And I'm going to change the manual focal, focal distance here to, let's try 300. Now you see that the grass is in focus and the background is out of focus. I may even bring that in more. Let's try 100. No, too much. 200. Probably not enough. Let's try 400. That's better. We'll go with 400. So I'm going to set a keyframe here for the focal distance at 400. Let's move through our timeline. Now it will stay at 400 until I change it. So our leaves are in focus. Here, the tree branch. I'm going to change the depth of field here. If I can get my tree branch back. Where is my tree branch? There it is. Let's change the depth of field here. Let's try 100. Let's try 50. Let's try 20. 20, let's try 30. 30 is not too bad. We're getting the um, the tree trunk here is in focus. 
So let's just set a keyframe here. Um, but I want it to focus in quite quickly. I don't want it to be at 30 here. So I'm going to change it back to what we were, were at 300, I think. And set a keyframe. I'm just going to scrub back through my timeline. So foreground in focus. Foreground still in focus through the tree. Tight foreground focus when we get to the tree branch. Looks like we might be going through a branch there. So what I might do here is I might also just move the move the arm a little bit I think just getting back into position select the crane rig again um, the crane pitch the crane yaw the crane length maybe try changing the yaw a little bit did we set a keyframe for the yaw no, we didn't. We did we? Yeah, we did. Okay, good. Um, we might just change the yaw a little bit. So instead of 0, 0.0, let's try 0 0.5. Instead of 5, let's try 20. No, too much. Let's go back to 10. Still too much. Let's try three. Three is not too bad. Uh, I'm going to set a keyframe for the yaw here at three. Um, but I'm going to change the depth of field again. Uh, let's try. Let's try ten. No, let's try forty. Maybe fifty. Let's try 60, and that's better. Now we have the, we can see the bark on the tree. Again, let's set our keyframe. I'm just going to scrub back through the timeline. So I want to make sure that um, there are no other little weird things that the camera is clipping through. So start with the grass, we move up. I don't know what's happening with Twitch and my transcoding either. I wish they'd give it back to me. It's been a few weeks now that I haven't had transcoding on my stream. And it's starting to annoy me. Uh, we move through the tree. We have a tree branch right in the foreground, but that's okay. We're focusing on the tree branch behind it with our depth of field. Transcoding. Yes, that's right, Smokeberry. I want my transcoding. Come on, Twitch gods, give me my transcoding back. Please. Don't make my viewers watch me in source quality. Because I know some people have potato internet, like um, Australia has pretty potato internet, so I get it. I do get it. And I want you guys to be able to watch me. So we need to get Twitch to give me my transcoding back. Um, normally we do have it. But I know Twitch, like I said, have been making all these changes behind the scenes. So maybe it's just taking a while to filter back through let's change our depth of field here let's go to 400 uh, 400 uh, let's try 300 i still want the leaves to be in focus and not the building at this stage let's set a keyframe let's keep moving through our tree And then when we get to the top here, I think I want the building to start to come into focus. So let's try 3000. And our building's in focus. Let's set a keyframe there. Again, I'm just going to scrub back through my timeline. I'm just going to play this through on a loop a couple of times so we can see what the animation looks like. It's 
So at this stage, the tree is in focus and the building will come into focus slowly as it keeps moving up towards the top. Foreground in focus, tree in focus, building out of focus, move up through the tree, tree stays in focus. And then the building comes into focus toward the top of the animation. I think that'll be okay for another shot. You probably noticed I like setting up cameras that move through things like grass, tree, leaves. I just think that they're more interesting to watch as a viewer than just having like a wide shot of the building that you're moving up to sort of front on. That's a very boring sort of camera shot. So I think this this will be cool for another camera shot. So I'm just going to do a save all here. Now we do need a shot where we come from the main terrace down the path toward the building. Um, so again, I'm going to deselect that camera so we can get a better view here in our viewport. So we have a lot of shots that take place around this tree trunk and around the main terrace. But we don't actually have a shot where we're moving uh, this way toward the building. So I think a shot that just moves along the terrace will be cool. Because we've got lots of shots sort of like facing this way, but none facing this way. So let's do that. I'm just going to zoom up so I can see where I want to start my, um, my rig. Let's create a new camera and this is going to be shot 32. We're going to have a lot of shots for our cinematic. Let's open that one up. Uh, and now for this one, I'm going to use a camera rig rail because I want a nice smooth movement. Let's just rotate it around the right direction. Sort of like that. And let's start expanding our rail. So I'm just going to hold the, select that endpoint and then hold down the Alt key to drag out a new point. Again, let's just get a bit of an overview so I can position this correctly. Again, let's hold down the Alt and drag out another one. And Hold down Alt and drag out one more, I think. We can make some fine adjustments to this once we get the camera put on it. All right, let's drag in. Actually, before we drag it in, let's rename this so I can find it more easily again. Um, let's call this one X underscore. Okay, let's drag in a cinematic camera. Get into position. Let's make sure it's pointing in the right direction. Uh, and I want this one to point along the rail. Maybe with just a slight tilt inward. Move you up so you're not sitting inside the rail. Might move it up a bit more. I don't want it that close to the ground. Maybe more. At this stage, I'm looking at this little square here. 
until I put it in the main viewport. This is the one I'm looking at. We might tilt it up a little bit, I think. Maybe a bit more. That's better. Okay, let's attach it to the rail now. So, X camera rig is the one we want. Now we can add them to our shot track. Okay. Let's change our sensor to 18 millimeters. Change our manual focal distance to 3000. And turn on our camera in our cinematic view here so we can see what it's doing. I think our camera might be um, angled a little bit. So just let me have a look at what it's doing. Yeah, it is. I'm just going to rotate our camera a little bit. There we go. We want a nice square looking shot, not, a, not an angled building like it's um, falling over. Not the leaning terapeza here. We don't want an angle on it. Again, I'm just making sure that um, it's sort of squared up. Now. Well, the leaning terror of San Francisco, Smithbury says, Wax King, hey Wax King, good to see you. How are you? Did you have a good weekend, Wax King? Haven't seen you for a while. Hope you're well. Um, now, just because our camera is on our rail doesn't mean we can't move our camera back. Good. How have I been? I've been very well. Thank you for asking, Wax Kink. Yeah. Busy with work. Catching up on stuff that... Um, well, because I couldn't I couldn't stream or work for a week while well, my glasses were being made up, um, I've got like a backlog, so yeah, I've been working hard, working seven days, but it's all good, it's all good. I'm well, I like what I do, I hope you're well, and good to hear that you're well. Um, we may move the camera back a little bit. But what I'm going to do here, I think, is I'm going to move the entire rail back. I just think I want a bit, I want it to start a little bit further back. I don't really want to go any further back than that. Uh, Wax King says, we've been making a game for the last month. We wanted to see if we could make one in a month. And how did you go? Did you make the game in a month? Did you meet, meet the deadline? It's, it's a big ask to make a game in a month. I know uh, Epic have their, their um, Epic Game Jam things where people have a few days to make a game, I think. So the pressure's really on, but doing it in a month, the pressure's on then too. So how'd you go? Did you end up making a game in a month? Uh, Wax Kink says, doing great. We are very close to done. We have two days left. Oh, cool. Good to hear. Well, I think you should be pretty proud to get a, to get a game made in a month is pretty good. Pretty, pretty damn good. So what are you going to do with it once you've made it? Is it just for your own, you, you, just so you guys can challenge yourselves? Or are you going to... Put it online somewhere? What are you going to, anything is particularly you're going to do with the game? Uh, this, 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 this. Trying to work out if I want to move it up, move it down. Let me choose the camera here and see what happens if I pull it down a little bit. Because so I do want to sort of see a bit of the path. Uh, 
uh, Wax Kink says we're going to sell it for just a few bucks. It has good. Uh, it's been good practice. Well, cool. Um, let us know when you when you've got it for sale. Pop on, pop online, pop into chat and tell me when you've got it for sale, and we'll tell everyone watching about it. Because it sounds cool, and we can check it out too. Check out your game. Um, that's the other good thing. Don't, don't think because Epic Games here that the UE4 is used for AAA games that you have to make a AAA title when you're using it. You can make mobile games using uh, using UE4. You can make VR stuff. You can make console stuff if you want. Um, but, yeah, make all sorts of stuff using uh, Unreal. And the, the, the 4.20 release, they did add a lot of stuff for mobile, so... Yep, post it in Discord, Wax Kink. That's that's an excellent idea. When when it's ready, you post it, post a a link in in Discord. Sounds sounds good. Um, but do if I'm streaming, pop into chat and let me know, and we can check it out live on stream. Um, yeah, so you can make all sorts of stuff using Unreal, not just AAA games. You can make mobile stuff. It's good for everything. I'm trying to work out whether I want to see the path for this camera or not. And I really, really don't know. <laughs> I really can't tell. I can't decide. Um, a lot of our shots for our building so far have been pretty low starting. Wax King says, for sure, what project you're working on now? I'm creating a cinematic for that building we've been working on for the past 10 to 12 months, I guess. Uh, that, that Art Deco building, I'm, I'm actually finally at the stage where we're setting up the cameras for it now so that we can make our, our final cinematic in Premiere. So we're just rendering, setting up shots, uh, rendering out the different shots so that I can take all of our shots into Premiere and put them all together to a music track and add some sound effects and create our cinematic. So that's what I'm working on. And we're using Unreal to do the cinematic. What's going on here? Uh, you're reacting don't post those links in my chat only subs can post links in twitch chat so unless you're a subscriber to my channel uh, you'll be timed out and if you keep doing it you'll be banned that's either sniper echo or nightbot will do that um, only subscribers can post links in twitch chat can't wait to see it cool yeah I can't wait to finish it either uh, Yeah, and what's this, the Dragon Channel? I bet, mm. Remember, don't post links unless you're a subscriber, otherwise you will um, you'll get timed out. Yeah, they are bots. Trolls being trolls. That's exactly right, Galen. No, I'm not going to Smurberry Barbecue. Actually, I've been reading on Reddit where people have been posting links and then getting their account compromised and then getting their accounts suspended because people that have compromised their accounts have been broadcasting under their account pornography, race hate stuff. Uh, so, and it's happening all across Twitch at the moment. Hopefully Twitch will do something about it and ban these, these trolls and these bots. Um, but un unfortunately for them, um, <laughs> links abandoned my chat, so... <laughs> Uh, Wax King says, well, I'm going to head out. Good to see you all again. Talk to you soon. Good to hear from you too, Wax King. And thanks for popping in and let us know uh, about um, about your game. Post a link in Discord when it's ready. Just checking out what's going on here. Okay. I was looking at Discord. Got distracted. Yeah, I can't really decide with this um, this camera. So yeah, again, if you, any of you are streamers, so be aware of that. Don't don't click any of these shortened links if you don't have um, links banned in your chat because there, there there are these trolls going through Twitch at the moment who who post links in your chat. When you click on the link, it gives them access to your Twitch account, which they then uh, which they then use to to broadcast pornography, race, hate, all all, all horrible stuff. They do it so that the Twitch bans or suspends your account. Just be aware of it. 
So it, it, it might be an idea just to turn links off in your Twitch chat until until these little kitties, you know, get over the, their their childish little act here and move on to something else. Um, yeah, this camera. I'm not sure which way I want to go with it, so I think um, we might decide tomorrow. I'm just going to do a save here so we can come back to this camera first thing tomorrow. Um, I think we might call it a day though for today. I do want to thank you guys and girls very much though for hanging out with me and for watching. Um, I will be back on again tomorrow, same time, 5pm Pacific in the US, 10am in Australia, 1am in the UK. Uh, remember though, if you're not sure when I'm live, you can always look at my countdown below my stream in my panels. That'll give you a countdown to the next stream going live. Remember too to join the Phil Dust 3D Discord server if you're not already uh, a member because um, there's a good group of guys and girls on the, on the Discord server. You can show your work, all that sort of stuff. Uh, also remember too, you can follow me at, on Twitter at Phil Does 3 d because I always post when I go live to Twitter as well. But my schedule does not change, as you guys and girls know. Um, I will be back on again tomorrow. I do want to thank you guys and girls very much for hanging out with me and for watching. I want to thank Konzui for following as well. Uh, remember, if you enjoyed the stream and you want to follow my channel, I appreciate it when you do follow me on Twitch. I'll be back on again tomorrow. You guys and girls have a great night, and hopefully I will see you tomorrow. See ya.